we're studying from the teaching syllabus, and we're beginning on, on page uh, six uh, for, today's, for today's lesson. Uh, it, it is not easy to move from the corporal, uh, corporality of human persons into a supernatural area. It takes more than a mind to do it, you see. If, really, if the Holy Spirit doesn't do it, you don't make it in there. Uh, but what the Lord would like for us to do is to come to realize prophetically that we are living in the last days and that supernatural things are taking place. And sometimes things that look natural are not natural. They are supernatural. And, uh, I mean, they should not be, but they are. That's, the, that's what we're trying to say. And so uh, let us just be uh, informed, and then let us be alert. There are people that listen to truth for years and don't know anything about it at all. Just goes right through them. Let's not do that. Let's make truth a living factor in our lives. And let's make it more than truth. Let, let's make it something that we live by. I am seeking to live as if the Lord Jesus Christ was coming today. I want to live to where if an angel dropped by and says at 2 o'clock this afternoon, uh, Jesus will come, that I'd go right ahead and do what I was doing. That I wouldn't say, oh my God, I've got so much stuff to make right here. Tell him to make it at least three. Give me just one more hour. It's better just to have things right. And then you don't have to get right. And, and so uh, we, we, in this uh, beautiful set of lessons that we were, are just really uh, beginning, uh, I'd, I'd like for us to, to realize that the Word of God is true, the Bible is true, and these are the last days. And in times of crises, God uses these spiritual messengers in a far greater way. You read the book of Revelation, and it is amazing how God used these persons, other than human persons, to convey messages, you know. The one who showed John the entire book of Revelation John fell down to worship him, and he says, now, don't do that, you see, because I am one of the servants of the prophets. Worship God. To me, that is an amazing situation that someone who had been a servant, who had worshiped God, was designated to show humanity <laughs> The whole book of Revelation. Who? Man, I'd have liked that assignment. I'd have taken that right on real quick. And, and so God wants all of us, in Jesus' name, to uh, live in there real close and be what God wants us to be. And all the people said, let, let, let us begin here at what is number eight. I hope I'm not leaving out uh, anything too, too important here by dropping, dropping uh, that far down. Uh, distinct categories of angelic persons that do exist. Uh, when we study the scriptures uh, carefully, uh, we also discover that there are in the scripture classification of angels. Now, to me, that's very interesting because if that be true, I hate to say this, there's going to be classification of Christians over on that other side. Honey, you may have to shine my shoes. Or you may have to sweep off my doorsteps for me. Or I might have to shine your shoes and sweep off your doorstep, you see. Uh, over on the other side is going to be a different operation than it is on this side. They that the lowest should be the highest, or they that the highest should be the lowest. And those who've gotten all the glory they need, God won't need to give them anymore. But those who are worthy of it and didn't get any, they're going to have a lot coming. So don't worry, God is the mighty equalizer and makes things right. 
So many of us in this life feel that we didn't get a fair deal. My neighbor, the time's coming, we're all going to get a fair deal. I'm really glad for that. Going to get a fair deal. And we won't be the one judging it. The Almighty will, will judge it. In the scripture, we find creatures called archangels, super angels. Uh, those that have many angels under them. Um, in the book of Jude, verse 9, it says, Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, but he dared not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, Jehovah, rebuke thee. There is a look at that point into the supernatural world that three million Israelites never knew anything about. We had to come to a prophet of the New Testament to know that when Moses climbed that mountain, sat down on a rock, leaned back and smiled and gave up the ghost, that immediately there was another warfare, not with the local people, but the devil came and says, I want this body this body that beat me around and kicked me around and did everything. I just want to eat it. And there appeared an archangel, not a regular angel, one that was over one third of all the angels of heaven. And that angel had to respect this dignitary called Lucifer. It says he dared not remind him of his past. He dare not say that you caused the sorrows upon this earth. All he could do was say, the Lord rebuked thee. Now this is where I pick up my doctrines and things like this. I don't get them out of books. But this is where I find the truths that I hold fast to me. Because I've heard modern preachers living right now say the devil, that old turkey, I just want to tell you something. That person cannot cast out anything. For the simple reason, he has not been respectful. Oh, but you say he is a fallen angel. King Saul was a fallen angel too. And David refused to kill him. There he was asleep. And David with Goliath's, Goliath's sword in his hand, he could have made him number two. Goliath number one, Saul number two. But that man named King Saul had prophesied before. And he had been a man that had experienced God before. And David says, I will not touch God's anointed. And uh, he wasn't in contact with God at the moment. Full of hate and murder. You might think of some preachers that haven't lived right, that you have a right to vilify them. No, you don't. They may, they may have fallen from grace, but it's none of your business even to discuss them. It would be a lot better to read the Word of God and discuss yourself and to be sure that you're on the right track of being what God wants you to be. And all the people said, but here's a look into that other world where a fallen angel named Lucifer and one who is in charge of the military hosts of heaven, Michael. If it had been Gabriel, he would have been in charge of the telecommunications of heaven. When Mary needed to know that she would be the mother of the Lord Jesus, Brother, they didn't send a guy there with a lot of armor on. They did not send Michael in there. To, they sent tender little man in there that could whisper to her very graciously. And so Gabriel was sent. How many glad God knows what he's doing? <laughs> and that he doesn't miss the ball. Nor does he send the wrong messenger. And all the people said, 
But th that is a look uh, for you to see in, in distinct categories, and that's what we're talking about at the moment. Now, there's another group, if you go to page 7, called seraphim. These are beautiful, beautiful creatures. And in the, the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 1, it says, In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw also Jehovah. And he was seated upon a throne, high and lifted up. Ooh. And, and his train filled the temple. Talk about a wedding scene, brother. With a big trailer behind him. It says his trail filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim above the throne, above the, above the creator, were these beautiful persons. Each one had six wings, and with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with the two he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, 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 the Lord of hosts. It's one of the names of God, the Lord of battles, the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Some poor people can't see that. There are people living close to you that haven't had a look at the stars in many years. They got their nose too close to the ground, to the mud, to the mess, to the sorrow, to the sin, to see the glory and the majesty of the Almighty. And all the people said, And the posts of the door were moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Whoa, 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 woe is me. He saw himself. He says, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips, being a human person. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king. <laughs> but, uh, that, that lets you know who you are. Have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. Now, now that's worth your understanding that you got a photograph of heaven. You got to see what was going on in the heavenly places. The throne of God and the creatures, the created creatures. They didn't have a navel. They weren't born. They were created creatures that were round about him. And verse 7 says, And he laid the, the fire, the live coal, verse 6, Upon my lips, I'm on, on my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched my lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Here we see, now, now we haven't had a great amount of information on seraphims. We don't know how majestic, how awesome they really did look. But here's a picture of it, of what they were doing. They cleansed a man, isn't that beautiful? Taking away from his lips. He wasn't a blasphemer, don't, don't be thinking wrong. He was a preacher. He was a prophet of God. But laid a coal of fire upon him to cleanse all humanity from him. And to make him clean before the almighty God. Isn't that beautiful? Did you know it's God that makes us clean? 
It's God that makes us pure. It's God that cleanses us. And here we find the function and operation of a group of angels called seraphim. Then you have the cherubim. The cherubim were the first angels ever mentioned in the Bible. Also, there were two figures called cherubim, made of gold and placed over the Ark of the Covenant, which would be a whole, a whole other study. In Genesis 2, 24, it says, So he, the cherub, drove out the man and placed at the east garden of Eden cherubim. It's plural. More than one. And a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life so that these human creatures, Adam and Eve, would not eat of the tree of eternal life to live forever. Oh my God, what would have happened in this earth, you see. Number D on page seven. Here's one that you possibly hadn't even heard about. Sorry for you that don't have a teaching syllabus because we leave one whole page for you to make your notes. But some of us are not students. That when we leave here, you won't even know the names of these creatures that we're talking about. And that's a pity. We're put on earth to learn. Can you say amen? amen. There's a group called the Holy Ones and the Watchers. And this interesting designation for angels is found in Daniel chapter 4. And uh, beginning in verse uh, 13, he says, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. So you have two degrees of, of, uh, of, of creatures, one called a holy one and one called a watcher. Now, now one could turn, turn his fancy loose, and that wouldn't be right. Too many preachers have already done that. Uh, just, just leave the word like it is and take it like it is. It's good just like it is. And if you take it like it is, if God wants you to know more, he'll tell you more. And all the people said, verse 23, and whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, hew down, hew the tree down, destroy it. Yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth. This was that wicked king that looked, said, look at Babylon that I built. And God said, just a minute, just a minute. You didn't build it, I built it. A lot of people in America, you're as bad as Nebuchadnezzar. You're talking about what you have built. This country would be nothing but a shambles were it not for the most high God. And you may live to see the day it will be shambles. And you will carry a little cup down the street hoping somebody will put a piece of bread in it. Oh, no, no. Oh, honey. A thousand generations have said no, but it didn't do any good. It has to do with the way you live before the almighty God is to your future. And everybody said. He says, but, 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 but keep the roots thereof in the earth even with a band of iron and brass so that it won't be torn to pieces and knocked to pieces, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. Now, each of these could be a dramatic sermon, you see. The king was put off his throne. He went absolutely crazy. He wandered away from whatever they were keeping him in, went out and began to eat with the wild beast, eat with them, and live with them, and had fingernails like claws. And for seven years, he had no human mentality. God was trying to teach him 
that God Almighty is the high and lifted up one. You say he hasn't done us that way yet. Well, Babylon lasted it over 70 years in its majesty. Our years haven't quite run out yet. You don't know when they will run out. If America does not repent, America will be drugged down like a beast in the field. Now, you've you got to know that. Oh, I don't believe it. Honey, your believing has nothing to do with what God's going to do. You don't have any capabilities of telling God what to do. You're nothing but a worm, the Bible says. So the best thing to, to do is to believe it and accept it and to live for God. And it's the best life. It's the happiest life. And I'm glad I'm in the good life. How about you? The holy ones and the watchers. Then here's a group called principalities or principal ones. Uh, a principality is an area over which a prince presides. And so here we have principalities, uh, those who work over certain areas and are leader for God over certain areas. It says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities. That's organized groups of demon forces. We wrestle against powers. There are amazing powers in the world. You saw strange powers this past week where a man who vowed he would destroy Israel signed a document to be at peace. You said, that's good news, honey. There's no good news there. Nobody changed their heart. They only wrote on a little piece of paper. You can take the paper to the toilet with you if you want to because that's about how much it's worth. You don't go change hate into love. When you've been hating for 40 years, you don't suddenly become a dove of peace. Are you here? Amen. You say, Brother Summer, what does all of this mean? If I were you, I'd start studying it. Because I gave a whole series of lessons, you can get them, on the book of Ezekiel. Beginning in chapter 34, naming the enemies of Israel in the last times. And they're all there right now. And showing you how a nation that was like dry bones scattered on a desert. The breath of God brought them all together and made them a mighty nation. Phenomenal. In your lifetime. From all... The nations of the world that came people cemented together into one and became a nation. I don't know that it's ever happened before like that. And I have been in and out of there since 1950. You can't imagine the agony when a man comes out of Germany and he's a scientist, has a keen brain. Sends his son, 18 years old, off to the army. And he comes dragging in a little Yemenite girl that don't know how to go to the toilet. Said, this is going to be my wife. Oh, my God. What are we going to do with my 500 years of culture? Her daddy didn't know what a wheel was. He dug it on the ground. I love her. She's mine. <laughs> Love is an institution for the blind. Well, they said that they say that love is blind and marriage is an institution, so. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, you see. Very few people know anything about them at all. Against spiritual wickedness in, in high places. Father, bless thy word. May thy word become so strong and so powerful within us. We believe you to change our lives, our attitudes. Change us, Lord, by your mighty power. Now, Lord, we believe you for this. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand, everybody.
We will continue at that point in our next lesson, and we might move right over and into the following lesson at the same at the same moment if we can. I'm telling you more about these heavenly creatures <laughs> that the natural man cannot conceive of, but but that these are, that are spiritual know about. And there's going to be a greater manifestation is the only purpose we have in teaching this. And I want to be ready for it. How about you?